apologize. That took a little bit longer than I expected. Where did we leave off? Exiled. We'd long since left paved road, paved roads behind. The carriage rocked back and forth as it proceeded down the rough dark path. For hours I stared through the window as unfamiliar scenery flowed past. Eventually, a fog settled over the area, making it difficult to discern night from day. We made our way through the dense, dark, dense woods. And beyond them, like the world fading into view after a dream, a mansion appeared before us. The windows were either shuttered or boarded, encasing the house in darkness. In a way, it felt like all I had done was move from one prison to a much larger one. Briefly, I thought they had possibly been sealed to keep anyone from seeing me inside, but my coming here was a very recent development. More likely, then, the house had been in this condition when it was initially purchased. Quite the piece of property my father had found himself with. <laughs> I wondered if he had been swindled by its previous owner. I hope so. I hope he paid big bucks for this. I hope the real estate agent conned the shit out of him. It was a gloomy, uninviting place, but it didn't seem to be in disrepair. The coachman left my luggage outside the door, gave me an empty farewell, and went on his way. I was entirely alone. Unfortunately, Mikkel, you are very used to that, aren't you? <laughs> oh, man. Your life has been real shitty. Mikkel. Close enough? Mikkel. Yeah, I guess that works. I spent some time just staring out at the forest, but naturally there was nothing of interest to be found there. So I quietly turned around and opened the door to the mansion. Certainly dark. I could barely even see my own feet. Briefly, I considered trying to unshutter a window or two, but ended up deciding against it. The less inviting the place looked, the easier it would be for me to avoid contact with the outside world, as DDA had recommended. I don't know how to pronounce his name exactly. Is it DDA? DDA? I think it's DDA. DDA. I'll stick with that. Standing there in the darkness for several minutes, my eyes gradually grew accustomed to the lack of light. While it was hardly ideal, it was sufficient to take a look around the house. The inside didn't seem to have received the same level of care as the outside. Everything was dusty and the air was many years stale. But I wasn't in the cleaning mood. Yeah, we know, you're a... You're a noble. So I dug through my luggage for a bundle of candles, lighting one with a flint. A uh, stained glass window?
examining the large room I found myself in, I came across a stained glass window, window depicting an angel. I said window twice. A window window. The Archangel, after whom I had been named, looked solemnly down upon me. They really named their kid after Michael and didn't expect him to be a boy? Terrible. Quite the joke. Two columns of evenly spaced pews ran the length of the room, all facing the multicolored window. I set the candlestick on a podium of some sort. Which is when I realized this is a chapel. A flat length of silver, bent in the middle, was mounted to the pulpit's face. When I saw it, I knew exactly what it used to be. A cross. The pews weren't facing the stained glass, but the cross. Why, though? felt as though the mansion had been built up around the chapel, rather than the opposite. I was perplexed as to why anyone would do that. Hmm. But of course, there was no one around to sate my curiosity. Taking the candlestick back in hand, I made my way beyond the pulpit. There sat a small letter I pressed one hand against the cool surface, and my heart leapt. It was abnorm abnormally cold. But the door itself seemed perfectly normal, and an inexplicable anxiety spread throughout me. It was a very unusual sensation. My instincts told me I should stay far, far away. And my heart told me it was my duty to see what lay beyond. What am I going to find back there? After a few moments' hesitation, I decided to act in opposition to my instincts. Uzumaki, I know where this shit goes. Uzumaki. There you go. <clears throat> the wooden stairs stretched so high I couldn't tell where they ended. An observation tower. As if being pushed forward by some inhuman force, I mounted the staircase. By the third or fourth loop, soft light began peeking into the tower through regularly spaced rectangular openings in the stone walls. Through one such window, I gazed outside. And far off in the distance, beyond the seemingly endless ocean of trees, I saw a small village. I'm ever going to go. Yeah, good thing. Village just full of assholes. Fucking Amadi. What a bastard. Hmm. So many stairs. 
It had been quite some time since I had exerted myself this much. I hardly had any opportunity locked away in my chambers. With every step I took, I could hear my joints creaking and my muscles screaming. And I was long since out of breath, only staying upright with the help of the wall. <sighs> this is pitiful. Damn it. Cringe male life. to see it. <laughs> but turning back it never occurred to me. I had to keep climbing. Had to make it to the top. And it was that feeling of necessity that pushed my exhausted body upward. <sighs> By the time I reached the top, I was practically gasping for air. Sweat streamed down my forehead. I wiped it aside, turning my gaze toward yet another door. But unlike the first, what on earth? A tangle of rope covered the surface. Layers upon layers of it, making its intent abundantly clear. Nothing shall come in or out. It didn't look like it had been put there recently, either, as much of it was rotted through. Out of curiosity, I grabbed at the coil and yanked. The rope snapped in several places, chunks falling limply to the floor. That wasn't enough to allow the door to open, though. Hmm. People only sealed doors like this for a reason. Largely because they didn't want, or couldn't allow, others to see what would hid behind them. Like what they did to me. For a few moments, I felt I was looking at down at myself from outside my body. If I hadn't been this man, or someone else standing there, they would have turned back at the sight of the sealed off door, acting as though nothing was there, or would they have done as I did? I ground my teeth, a mix of annoyance and bitterness rushing through me. I need to do something, I'll be right back.
sure how long I'll go for. I'm still not feeling super great. I have no idea why exactly that is. Who knows? Ground my teeth, a mixture of annoyance and bitterness rushing through me. But I did not hesitate. I held the flame of the candle up to the wall of rope, careful not to set the whole thing ablaze, slowly, carefully burning through them one by one. It was repetitive and time consuming, but I persisted, wiping away sheets excuse me, Oy. sheets of sweat before it streamed into my eyes. The sun was well on its way down before I managed to expose the door. I took a deep breath, looked up at it, and gulped. There was something indescribably chilling about this door. And then, I pushed it open. A barely noticeable breeze brushed past me. A single ray of sunlight shone into the room, coming from a single window, sitting high atop the wall. Cast a milky white patch of light onto the hard floor, revealing the fact that I was not alone. The rumors say a witch lives in the mansion. There I saw in this cursed house a skeleton with only one arm. A cursed mansion for a cursed man. It was like I was destined to end up here. I had no way of finding out who the skeleton belonged to. So I left it there, at the top of the tower, and retreated into thought. Hmm. I wondered to myself, how had the one-armed person, one-armed person died? How had they felt locked in that room, staring up at that sole window, so far out of reach? About the only thing they would have seen was the sky and the occasional bird. Had they yearned for more light? Or had they come to despise the tiny patch of it that trickled into the room? Had they been some sort of wicked criminal, imprisoned for wrongdoing? Not all prisoners are necessarily bad people. Having been branded with an unexistent curse, couldn't help but think that perhaps something similar had happened to whoever they were. Vainly reaching out for the sun. Constantly praying for rescue that would never come. What had gone through their mind as they withered away? Mm. Would anyone ever come for me? Would my brothers keep their word? Or would I, years from now, end up another pile of dry bones somewhere in this house? Unwanted and alone. Well, you, uh, you do die in this house, but your bones don't end up here. <laughs> That's all I'll say. Oh, it's not great, though. It's not great. It's very bad for you. <clears throat> Robbed of all hope with no one but the darkness to talk to as it sunk its teeth deeper and deeper into me. That corpse could be me in the future. Didier, Georges, did you really send me here to keep me hidden? Or is this to be my grave? Can I put my faith in you? Can I trust you? When you say I'll be able to return, that everyone will happily accept me, that we'll all be together again, that we'll play chess, that we'll draw pictures, that no one will be left out, 
All I really wanted was for people to accept me for who I was. To accept that I was a man. No, that I had grown to resemble a man. That I had the heart of a man. I didn't need anything else. I didn't want to cause anyone anguish. I didn't want to hate anyone. I simply wished to be who I was. No, who I wanted to be. And I didn't want to be treated like I was strange or different. If that was asking too much, then at the very least, I wanted to have one person in my life who truly understood me. <sighs> Dear dear, Georges, I pray that you can be that for me. Lurking quietly in the mansion's all-encompassing darkness, I waited and hoped that the day might arrive when I could come out of hiding. So this mansion is uh, just just one big closet. <laughs> uh, happy Pride Month, everyone. Ow. This one hurts still. However, one, two... Three years later, I had still not been set free. Only my mother wrote me, and in all her letters, she said the same thing. When your curse is broken, come back home, sweetheart. Ooh. When your curse is broken, I want you back in my life. When your curse is broken, everything will be back to normal. I wait expectantly for the day you are free of that terrible curse. The curse would never be broken, though. What I was now was what I was meant to be. All that time I had spent at a as a girl, none of that was real. Didier had said he didn't think I was cursed. My brothers didn't think I was some hellish demon child. So no. The curse would never be broken. Because there was no curse to break. I wasn't cursed at all. There was no damned curse. The flow of time eroded away at me, slowly killing any confidence I had once had. Sucking me dry of all trust. For others and myself. With enough time, I started questioning my own beliefs about what I was. Started thinking that perhaps I was cursed. Much like they had at the Bollinger Estate, the servant who came by every month did his best to avoid making eye contact. But beyond just bringing me food, he was also checking in on me, and making sure I didn't attempt to run away. And every month, he probably went back and told Mother the same thing that my curse had still not been broken. Do you have the answers I seek, O oh Father in heaven? If you do, I ask of you to guide me, to please tell me what I am. If I truly am cursed, and perhaps you could tell me how much my soul weighs too. Probably not very much. I spent enough time alone in that dark mansion to drive anyone mad. The more time that passed, the more I grew to question myself, my worth as a human being. Whenever the self-doubt and loathing became too much to take, I trekked up to the top of the observation tower to see the light. Sitting there, on the hard floor, I would place my hand on the skeleton's leg, its shoulder, its hand. From 
than the size of the bone. Whoever it was appeared to have been still been young when their life withered away. Poor child. Even I feel blessed compared to you. Oh, how miserable it must have been locked away up in this tower to have your arm mercilessly severed. You have my pity, though. I alone shall mourn your death, and I alone shall take comfort in your presence. You poor, poor child. By pretending to pity someone who had, it, who had had it worse than me, I was able to feel somewhat better about myself. Because if I was in a position to pity someone else, then, conversely, I wasn't in a position to be pitied. Vainly, foolishly trying to convince myself of a lie. I spent hours, days, alone in that tower, holding the dry bones in my arms. That cannot be sanitary. That simply cannot be. Now there was a sight to lead, lend credence to my alleged madness. Over time, the air in the mansion seemed to thicken, as if the fog were condensing. Water pushed out all the air, swallowing me up, suffocating me. A putrid mire. Yeah, I know, I know how it feels. Damn humidity. <laughs> I was trapped at the bottom of this thick, black sludge. Soon I lost track of the passage of time. My only landmarks being the dates on Mother's letters. Before I knew it, eight years had passed. Eight years, Jesus. That's ten years, that's two years until uh, Giselle comes. What the hell is this? I hadn't heard my own voice in so long. I'd almost forgotten what it sounded like. There was a delivery that day, but it wasn't the usual package. The servant was instead carrying a large rectangular object draped in cloth. Shoving that into my hands, he said, the regular supplies will be here in a couple days, and then ran off. Presumably, he was afraid to spend any more time than necessary with a cursed man. But I didn't bother to say anything about it. I knew it was a waste of breath. And I was not inclined to hold it against him if he didn't want to look me in the eye. To exchange words. All I could reasonably do was sit back and bear it. As long as I kept my mouth shut... The man could do his job in peace. <sighs> By the candlelight, I began unwrapping the package the servant had delivered. From within, a sheet of parchment fell to the floor. And inside the package was a painting. Huh? Just looking at it, I couldn't tell what it was, aside from the fact that it was the portrait of a woman. I knew those brush strokes, though. They were very distinctly George's. The woman depicted had white hair. White hair. There was a flash, a fresh jolt of pain that had nearly felt faded away. The half dozen needles piercing my chest. So much blood had spilled from those gouges, I had long since lost any sensation of pain. But now it was back. No, George, you didn't. So apparently George is, that, that, that's pronounced as, as George. The, the S is silent. My whole body froze. The blood in my veins came to a halt. I couldn't breathe. I was drowning in a pool of imaginary water. I crouched down to pick up the sheet of parchment. It was a letter 
in Mother's handwriting. The first line read, as it did in all her correspondence, My beloved daughter, Michelle, every day I pray that your curse might be broken. But lately I have come to think that perhaps the reason you remain cursed is because you have forgotten what you are supposed to be. So long you have spent in that accursed form, it is a little surprise you would lose sight of yourself. How can you return to your true self if you do not even remember what that is? So I asked George to paint you a picture, hoping it might help you break free of your curse. You are a beautiful young woman, my dear Michelle. I presume you have already seen the painting. It's lovely, wouldn't you agree? That flowing white hair and skin like glass. Those deep, enchanting red eyes. Those slender fingers and the modest feminine fi frame, as thought of said figure. Those soft lips. Is it not you? It is not you when you were younger, though. Instead, I had him imagine what you would look like now. That is what you will look like when your curse is broken. Isn't that wonderful? Imagine it. Envision yourself, your true self. Remember who you are. Recall your true self. I wait eagerly until the day you come back to me, looking as beautiful as you do in this painting. My dear, sweet Michelle, this is you. This is the real you. You are beautiful, my little girl. And I love you dearly. That awful fuss all those years ago, you can pretend none of that ever happened. Forget all about those dread that dreadful thing that first made you. Become the girl you used to be. The girl you were meant to be. So you can once more be a happy family. I am waiting, forever waiting for you. Yeah, no wonder he fucking. No wonder he gouged that painting. She doesn't. She doesn't love her son. She doesn't love her child. She loves the daughter. She thought she had. She'd never know she female, mocking me for stubbornly insisting I wanted to be a man. The pain in my chest swelled, spilling from my mouth in grunts and moans. <clears throat> and then... Ah! I screamed from the bottom of my lungs. Why? 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 I yanked at my hair. Why, George? slammed the painting against the floor. You said I could believe you. You swore to the god of art. So why? Why would you do this to me? You said yourself you didn't think I was cursed. You acknowledged me as your brother. You know this isn't me. So why? Why would you make this? I've been waiting for so long. I put my trust in you and Didier. I trusted you. I believed you would always support me. Was that all a lie? Deep down, you really think I'm cursed, just like Mother. That's why you haven't written to me. Why you haven't answered any of my letters. Where did my faith get me? Why did you even help me escape? Was it all for show? Was my execution just a lie? 
An excuse for you to send me somewhere far away? Was it? Tell me, George. Tell me the truth. But you, dear, where do you stand? Uh, uh, no, this isn't real. My voice was getting hoarse. I didn't have the strength to hold it in, and everything came spilling out of me, squeezed out by the phantom water. And the white-haired girl in the painting just stared back at me, smiling. I bit down on my lip as hard as I could. A metallic taste spread through my mouth, drops of blood trickling to the floor. Pulling the knife I used to open the monthly deliveries for my waistband. I lifted it high into the air, gathering what remained of my strength. This isn't me! And slashed the woman's face with it. This isn't me! This isn't me! I am not this woman! I'm a man! Carved into it. This is not how I look! With everything I had. Don't... Don't try to erase who I really am. Don't call me repulsive. Don't say I'm an abomination. I tore into that smile, contempt surging from every slash. This woman isn't real. I wanted to curse the whole damned world. Every last thing, this wretched mire that had become of my life. My brothers for happily going about their lives as I suffered here in the darkness. My delusional mother, for refusing to acknowledge who I was. My father, for trying to have me killed. Amy, for making me realize I was a man, and then torturing me for coming out about it. Everyone. I didn't care anymore. I wanted everyone who had ever wronged me to suffer the same way I had. I can make that happen. <sighs> A voice rang out. I can curse them for you, my dear. It was a woman's voice, muffled, like there were several walls between me and her. Who's there? I swiped up my candlestick, thrusting it forward to the sides behind me. But there was no one else around. Give it a little thought. It's not that difficult. And when you figure it out, come to me. I have been waiting for so long for someone like you. Someone with such hatred for the world. How am I supposed to know who you are? How could you not, my dear? You visited me so many times. Held me in your arms. Whispered poor child into my ear again and again. What? No, that's not possible. Ah, I see. I finally, truly lost my mind. If that's what you wish to believe, that's your choice. But the way I see it, if you had truly lost your mind, you wouldn't be in so much pain. The voice, still muffled and unclear, seemed to be coming from somewhere far away and very close by at the same time. Find your way to me and open the door once more. Let me out of my cage. Give me your hand. I knew in the back of my mind that it was all absurd, but nonetheless, I did as the voice said. I let myself be drawn in by the pleasant whispers. The archangel stood proudly on his glass perch, looking down on me. His gaze almost seemed judgmental, but I marched to the tower, unconcerned. For so long I have been waiting, 
waiting for the day I would be rid of this darkness, for the day someone would truly set me free. When you arrived at this house, I felt the hands of fate at work, that you were led here, that you were meant to come to this place. You've been through so much to get here. I know your pain. I know how it feels to be locked up, to be tortured and used for others' gain. You were the only one to have ever had to ever have pity for me, and I shall be the only one to have compassion for you. You were the only one to stay at my side, and I shall do the same for you. You can give me life again. You can resurrect me. Now, open the door. Michael. Felt as though I was no longer in control of my own body. Her voice was tender in a way unlike either Mother's or Amy's. Enticingly so. Standing at the top of the observation tower, I pushed open the door. And the first thing I saw was the ray of light shining through the window. <clears throat> and nothing else. Thank you for opening the door was empty. The skeleton, which had been sitting there as long as I had been in this house, had vanished without a trace. I spun around, my gaze darting back and forth across the chamber, but there was no one there, only her voice whispering in my ear. You made this possible. You gave me the chance to have. Now I can make those men suffer a hell even worse than the one they put me through. Constant, everlasting despair. Their flesh may turn to dust. So long as their souls live on, their torture will know no end. <laughs> locked you up here without telling you who house, whose house it was? You sad, pathetic thing. Though, that's exactly the kind of person I needed. You're... you're not the witch, are you? That I am. I am the cursed witch, who loathes this puny, wretched world, curses it. And my name is Morgana. Morgana. Let me see if the... Uh, is there any red text in this? There's that shitty fucking letter. So this is where... she would have been reawakened. Presumably due to the... Hue... Wait, where? was nothing but a legend, a tale. If you don't believe me, I would be happy to show you. Let's see. I could place a curse on someone you have a grudge against. Drag them down into the dark abyss. You are the one who granted me freedom, after all. Sympathized with me. Pitied me. Appreciated me. You happily embraced my filthy corpse. And for that, I will grant your wish. Wishes can come true, Michael. Much the same way I was able to come back to life. If you remain steadfast in your desires, 
they will become realities. For devotion and yearning are the fountain from which miracles spring. I cannot leave the mansion's grounds, but that is but a minor inconvenience. Tell me who you wish to curse, and I can lead them here. I can force the cross you were made to bear onto them. I believe in my power to perform miracles, because you made my miracle a reality. So tell me, my dear, who will be first? Your second brother, who made that ridiculous painting? George. Shall we kill him? He deserves at least that. He brought you more than enough pain. But if you would rather, you could curse your mother instead. Or the woman who set you on this path. Perhaps you would prefer your father? With him gone, you could return home. Uh, ask, and I will perform a miracle for you. I didn't think she was lying, either. As ridiculous as the whole affair sounded, the skeleton had disappeared from the tower, and I was hearing a disembodied voice. But beyond that, the voice seemed to have a sort of magnetism to it. If magic truly did exist in the world, then her words were laced with it. There was a power in her voice, something that repelled any instinct I might have to doubt the things she said. So I, on the verge of losing the grasp of reason altogether, believed every word the witch said. I wanted to curse them. To curse my brothers, mother, father, Amy. And the witch was saying I could do precisely that. What will it be, my dear? There is no price. I don't require a sacrifice or a dark ritual to perform my magic. I simply wish to show my gratitude. I want you to have that which you desire. Uh, who do you want to curse? The witch's sweet whispers hung in the air for a brief moment before wisping away. All the muscles in my body tensed up. I felt woozy, like the floor was wobbling beneath me. It took everything I had not to fall over. Who did I want to curse? Oh, and you are welcome to choose more than one. All of them, even. I could curse them. And the witch would kill my family. I would be free. No one would know I had been born female. Why don't you become the new head of the estate? Mother, father, Amy, all of them. They had exiled me to this place. Have your revenge. <sighs> A black butterfly fluttered across the room's single shaft of light. As I stared absently up at it, dozens of memories, of emotions, flashed through my mind. At the end of the day, we're family. We can get past anything. With enough time, everything will go back to the way it was before. Just like it did for myself and George's. George. I don't understand. Why would I think about them now? They've abandoned me. Left me in that room for two years. Then left me here for eight months. Should I? Why should I? <sighs> Have 
you made up your mind? I have. Then tell me, my dear, who will it be? Who will you curse? anyone gone on. Surely you jest. I know just how much you wish to see them dead. I felt all your hatred, your despair. And you mean to tell me you can't curse them? It struck me just now. I can't do that to family. I cannot curse my own family. This is the family that cast you aside, labeled you as cursed, made you suffer for years, then locked you away in this remote mansion. They don't even feel the slightest bit remorseful about any of it. I understand that. I know that they don't give the same weight to their words as I do. I figured that out long ago. I know I'm alone in my prayers. They don't want the same things I do. I trusted them more than they ever deserved. So why, then, can you not curse them? Because, because I don't want to hate them. I don't want to bring them suffering. On the contrary, I want them to be happy. You have no place in that happiness, though. It is a happiness that rests upon your misfortune. Why, then, should you not drag them down so you can find respite for yourself? I would find no respite by cursing them. How could you be so sure of that, my dear? I most certainly find a great deal of it myself. <sighs> You're trying to follow your conscience, I can see that. But that good is superficial, and all it does is shackle you. Remove the shackles, and everything will be so much easier. Nothing you say can convince me to kill my family. Why not someone who isn't family, then? Surely you can think of at least one person you would like to see dead. Oh, I most certainly can could kill her a dozen times and it still wouldn't be enough. But just because I would be happy with her death doesn't mean there aren't people who would be sad to lose her. Remove any one person from that group, the whole thing could come crashing down. All because I couldn't restrain my own hatred. Your concern for them will devour you. Don't think I'm not aware of that. You aren't. You don't know that at all. The only reason you give them any consideration is because, deep down, you still have hope. But hope has a way of forsaking those who give it a home. You have a problem, and you need to take care of it before it kills you. <sighs> you and I, we were cut from the same cloth. While you may still care for your family now, in time, you will come to curse them. Uh, consider that a warning, Michael. Your hatred, your curse, is what brought me back to life. There is no getting around that. We do have plenty of time, though. No need to rush a decision. I'll show you what it is you truly desire deep, deep down, and I'll show you again and again, until you finally acknowledge it. The black butterfly hovering by the window disappeared, and the witch's voice grew distant, overwhelmed. I collapsed to the floor, unconscious. I think that's where I'm gonna end it today, I have been feeling... Not great. Really not great. I, uh... I don't know. 
hopefully I'll be feeling better tomorrow. But a lot has been going on. We'll see. Hopefully I'll feel better tomorrow. Thankfully the games I'm planning on playing tomorrow shouldn't be as voicing heavy. Should be at least a little bit of Distracting for me. Mm. Just too much going on, I think. Too much happening. Hopefully tomorrow will feel better, but... We'll see. But thank you, everybody, for coming. Somebody to raid. It's so funny. Even with all that's going on, I'm still. It still makes me depressed seeing people play the game I want to play. <laughs> What a petty thing. Hmm. But, you know, we are all a bit petty, a bit selfish. Such is human nature. Such is life. Let's see, I think I shall raid into someone playing some Bravely Default. It is quite a good game. I enjoy quite a lot. I've played it through it myself. Bravely Default. This is Bravely Default 1. I have played some Bravely Default 2 on the channel, but have not been able to play it as of late due to my computer not working well with it. So I shall raid into Kaibar's Fang. I don't know if I've raided into him before, but... She'll do so. Alright. Thank you everybody for coming. I'm sorry I mended it um, early-ish. I guess four hours is a while, but I did take quite a long break. I just haven't been feeling great. Hopefully I'll be feeling better. I don't know. I'll try. I'm not feeling great. Alright, send you guys off. Take care, everybody. Hope... Hope you're, you're keeping alright in this crazy, crazy world. It's fun living in a, a government that does not care. I suppose I, not having a uterus, am one of the lucky ones. So, for those of you out there who are living through this, I, I wish you the best. And I'm so, so sorry that those in power care so little. I'm gonna... Good to do as well. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone, for coming by. I apologize for ending on such a note. I'm just not feeling the best. I don't know. Love you guys. See you soon.